Please give a warm applause to Aga Bayer with work redefined, harnessing the power of culture in the 21st century workspace. Please. <sighs> so here is a slightly unsettling thought, at least for me. If you hire a graduate today, she will probably not retire until 2060. And we don't need to go that far into the future, but what if we try to imagine what will her work experience be like let's say, in 20 years from now, in 2038. Can we do that? Well, it turns out that we can't. Futurists say that in the next 20 years, we will have more changes for humanity than in the past 300 years. So change is happening, it's exponential, and we need to rethink and redefine work. We need to redefine how work's done, who doesn't. We need to redefine what work even looks like. And we also need to rethink why do we work in the first place. And so we do need to redefine those things. We need to reimagine, we need to rethink. And this is exactly why I think that we have a major problem. We have a major problem because we are not great at redefining and rethinking things that we got used to, things that we have been doing for a while in a specific way. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's have a look at the elevator. So what happened? We were using elevators since 1880. And initially, they had operators. So there was actually someone whose job was to pull levers and make sure that the elevator stops in the right spot and that the door opens at the right time. Otherwise, it was slightly tricky and dangerous. And as you can imagine, that wasn't an ideal solution. First of all, this possibility of human mistake, but also quite costly. So engineers started thinking, can we rethink the elevator? Can we reimagine the elevator? And so they did, and it didn't even take them a long time. And in 1900, the automatic elevator that we know already today was presented to the public. And how do you think the public reacted to that? Yeah, angst and actually total resilience. So people hated it. They didn't want to be alone in the elevator. And in spite of promoting it, nothing happened, and eventually the producers had to abandon the whole idea. And probably we would still be riding in those elevators with operators if, um, if a disruption didn't happen. And so what happened was that um, the operators went on strike. It was a long one. It was in New York with lots of high buildings. And so the idea was revisited. And with no changes to the technical aspect of it, uh, it was reintroduced and adopted in 1945. So what was different? It's interesting. What was different is that they installed a big red stop button. There was some soothing music. And there was this telephone that we can use in case of emergency. So basically what they did is they created a safe environment for people to be able to embrace that change. But we don't have 45 years to figure out how are we going to create a safe environment for our people in our organizations so that they can embrace all these changes that are coming our way. Do we have 45 years? No, probably not. So I'm going to talk to you about a certain tool that we have that can help us to create that environment. And this is some data from very well-respected researchers around the benefits that this tool can bring to organizations if they use it properly.
So as you can see, all the important KPIs that you can imagine, and the list actually in reality is much longer, are here. Everything gets improved. And this tool is amazing because it works really seamlessly. And one feature that it has is it cannot be copied by competition. So what is it? Well, before I tell you what it is, I'll tell you what it's... Uh, I told you what it does already. And... Um, one interesting piece of information about this tool is for how long it has been available. What do you think? A few months? Few months, yeah. Yeah. And it was available for a really, really long time. So it was available for 170,000 years. And that's a conservative estimation. So what is it? Can you guess? Culture, absolutely. So culture enabled the early Homo sapiens to become the dominating species that we are today. And culture can give organizations similar benefits. But if we want to reap those benefits, we need to know how to do it. And... Um, I think that when you think about organizational culture, you can see it as basically the operating system that our companies run on. And it's really important to keep that in mind, what an operating system does, because what we see happen nowadays with all the changes is that organizations are putting a lot of effort into bringing about change. And it might be a new business model or uh, designing new employee experience or new customer experience, whatever it is, a lot of effort goes into it. And unfortunately, it doesn't play out in the same way that people would like to. And actually, they get this message from the system. <laughs> so the system simply rejects it. Our culture in our organizations says, no, -oh, this application is not going to run on our culture. So this is what happens when our culture, our system, is not compatible with our future. And this is exactly what Peter Drucker had in mind when he said that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And so I see two possibilities here. And most of you here are in HR. And we need to remember one important thing about culture. Culture changes and evolves irrespective of whether we do something to it or about it or not. It just happens and changes. So as HR professionals, whether you do anything about it or not, you are actually making a choice to have one of the two cultures. So the first choice that you have is to have culture by default. And culture by default basically sort of evolves naturally, organically. There is no intention there, it just happens. And very often it has roots in the old industrial era where top-down management was important and certainty and all these things. And the issue is that usually it's bug-ridden and doesn't play with the new inventions and causes a lot of problems. So that's one solution, one choice. The second choice is culture by design. And culture by design is when a company and leadership of the company and the employees sit down together and ask themselves, what do we need to become and who do we need to become in order to bring our vision to life? What beliefs, what values, what unwritten norms will we have to have to make this a reality and create a sort of environment where our people can embrace change and where our people feel safe to embrace change. So the choice is yours, and I do hope that you choose the second one. Thank you. <laughs>